So you need to work out how many calls you need to make based on your previous year's conversions from book discovery calls to actual paying clients. So it's all working from the big goal, which is the yearly goal, and then you work back backwards in segments. So it could break down to monthly revenue or whatever, and then you convert how much is one client bringing in per revenue per client, and then you work around based around that. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lynn Padetta here, helping you to achieve time freedom so you have more time for self, family, business, and life. In today's video, you're going to hear from my sales manager, Heidi Duan, who I got here to share with you what we use to track our sales so that you could really learn how to set your sales targets, how to track it, how to make sure that you improve on your sales process to convert more sales. So listen up as Heidi shares everything that we do at our company, Outsourcing Angel. Thanks, Heidi. So I would love to learn more about how do we actually track our sales? Because I think at the end of the day, you know, you want to make more sales, but I feel like over the years, until we started really caring about the numbers and setting up some targets, did we did we really see uh, the progress in our, our company? So yeah, Heidi, can you share some of the things that you do to track? Yeah, sure. So I'll share you my screen, but essentially prior to us, you know, setting up these sort of reporting levels we do daily reporting weekly reporting and monthly reporting you're really going in blind right you don't actually know what your targets are what you're trying to meet and if that's even profitable so when we started tracking daily figures it actually made the biggest difference to our business because it's sort of like a proactive indicator instead of a lagging indicator What's that word? Yes, yes, that's right. I think leading, 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 kind of. leading. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I anyway, know. So with uh, recording daily figures, it is a sort of like a leading indicator because you can check each day what your sales are making, and if there are any gaps in the business or if you are falling behind, you change your strategy so that you still stay on track for the week or the month. Now, if you have a look at this sort of sales report that we have put together, so it records the daily figures into a week and then it will tally up for the month so the whole month we can see we'll put in like our, our targets here monthly targets we'll put in our weekly targets reporting actually does all the formulas for us that we've inputted so we can judge the variance how many percent you know our conversion rates and those sort of things so it actually gives us a really clear understanding of where we're tracking how the business is doing for the month now this is monthly recording. We also have our year to date, and that's really important as an overview as a company because essentially you need to set yearly goals, quarterly goals, and you need to track that monthly to make sure that you're going to be on track to meet your end of year goal. These numbers here are just dummy numbers, but as you can see, we track every month here. Also reporting like graphs to come up so that the team can visualize what these numbers mean. So that's how yeah. we track our sales figures. Yeah. Yeah. Can you come run through? Um, I guess so. In our company, we offer VA, so it is a service-based business, and we the first thing that people do is uh, contact us and book us a discovery call. And I know that we set a target um, of say at this moment in time is seventy booked appointments. Well, how do we come with that number? How do people kind of come up with that number? Yeah, so these numbers are just not plucked in there here, right? So it's based on historical data and also the progress progression of the business. So if it's all backwards, uh, we work it out backwards. So say, for example, for the year, you want to meet X amount of revenue for the year, right? So you need to work out how many calls you need to make based on your previous year's conversions from, you know, book discovery calls to actual paying clients so it's all working from the big goal which is the yearly goal and then you work back backwards in segments so it could break down to monthly you know revenue or whatever and then you convert how much is one client bringing in per revenue per client and then you work around base around that so i guess that's the gist of it yeah yeah and so i guess what is the average number of call discovery calls could you handle as a salesperson could put, like humanly take a day <laughs> all right so before i like lose my voice and everything <laughs> i would say for it to be really realistic i can take around at most six to seven calls a day because that actually 
prior to every call, you need to do research about the client that you're or the lead, the prospect that you're potentially meeting. And then after the call, you need to prepare administration documents, um, you know, proposals and all that to then send to them. So essentially you need to prepare before and after. So essentially in the whole day, like if you're just talking about an average, you know, nine to the nine to five day, that's the most I could slot in because each of my call can take anywhere between 30 minutes to 45 minutes. Yeah. And if, if the lead is really, you know, have a lot of questions, it can take up to an hour. So you want to give that value as well. Yeah. Yeah. Are you able to go back to the sheet and run through those line items so that we can understand clearly what are we tracking? Yeah, sure. Hang on. Give me one second. All right. So if you look here in our sheet, it actually has who's responsible for inputting what data so that's clear for the team now here we record things like the book calls and it has a little description here to what that means so if anyone new comes into the business and checking our reporting they understand that and then so book calls non-organic so that means they're by referrals any sort of calls that come through non-organic um, and this is the total number of book calls and then the total numbers of completed calls. So just because they're booked doesn't mean I always get to see them, right? So the number that I think is really important after the book calls is the number complete because that's how many people I actually see and have an opportunity to talk to. We also measure the strategy calls book. So these days I sort of combine the discovery call and the strategy call in one call. If it flows that way, it's being in sales there's a lot of like you sort of like take it as it is if it works to then continue to the discussion then you do that but if they're short for time or not not ready for the next step then I wouldn't talk about strategy call with them so we record the conversion rate from when they take a discovery call and then convert to a strategy call now from strategy calls normally that's when I try to close a sale or a deal so that's the deposit taken right and that's the true conversion how many people do I talk to on a strategy call end up buying with us so that's what it means and then so part of our business placing a deposit is not a sure guarantee that they will become a client because we then onboard them and start the recruitment process so it's only until they actually set up their payments like in a DDR like a direct, direct debit, debit form is yeah direct debit is when they actually become a client so we measure that conversion from when they pay a deposit to when they convert to become a client as well so those are the key figures that we capture but also in here you know we have existing clients are they upgrading are they downgrading upselling so I think all that is quite essential because also reflective of our VA's quality, the business, you know, if people are consistently upgrading their VA service, then we're definitely doing something right, right? And if they're cancelling, we need to definitely drill in why are we getting so many cancellations if that's happening? Yeah, so that's the type of figures that we record as a business for our type of service. Yeah, and what happens with this data? So you're recording daily and then who do you actually report this to and like how do you actually use this data yeah so this gets fed back to the management team so there's operations there's marketing um so in terms of say marketing that this is really essential to them because then they can see where the leads are coming from if their marketing strategies are working if we're getting the reach you know based on each campaign if they run a campaign and then all the discovery calls are not from that campaign then you know like hey there's something concerning there should we be running this campaign for longer or should we cut it so this sort of information, even though it's say it really intertwines with marketing and just say if we're getting referrals, a lot of referrals or whatever, marketing would love to know that as well, because then perhaps we can tweak the way we write our copy or, you know, the next campaign to focus on, yeah, certain aspects where we're getting all the leads from. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how would you say life has changed with more, you know, detailed you know, metric sales reporting like this now compared to, you know, when you started, uh, you know, I guess our reporting was a little bit more basic. <laughs> <laughs> so when we started, it was very surface level and it was more like we just looked at it on a monthly basis, right? Every month, what the sales figures, that was a problem because then it didn't allow us to address any problems before the month end. So by the time we looked at the figures, it was too late. So this sort of like, I guess this sort of like assessment on a daily basis, 
it's really relevant because each day changes. If you know we get increasing number of leads or decreasing number of leads, we can address it straight away. And also, it actually makes the salesperson more accountable as well. So, for example, me, I'll give you an example. Like back then, I'll do all my sales figures at the end of each week, but it doesn't give me a view each day or how the week is tracking. Because then, by the end of week, that's when I do it all. I'm like, oh damn, this didn't happen, or what? I could have prevented it, right? So now each day I'm doing this, I can pick it up straight away. Okay, this person's rescheduled, pick it up, do it for the next day or whatever the reason is, like everything is addressed on the day. So having this sort of daily reporting and more deep diving into sales figure is actually really beneficial to the business. Hey, great. Well, that's it guys. Hope you've enjoyed the content that Heidi's shared. If you'd love some more advice specific for your business, then I would love to invite you to our or my private mentoring program called productizeskit.com. This is where you can get mentored directly from me to help you scale your business because everyone's got different businesses and different questions. So this is where you get one-on-one -on -one help, well, group help um, through my program. So do check out productizeskit.com. But if you'd like to check out some more videos on my YouTube similar to this video, check it out here.